Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Brand of Logging! So, uh, today, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I've been meaning to make this video for a while, uh, but due to, uh, <laughs> personal issues that have been super fun, uh, I haven't really been able to make a lot of videos. Um, I've had a lot of other things uh, on my plate that I had to take care of, uh, and it's just now come to the point where I have enough free time to make uh, another video. Um, but for those of you that have been following me on Twitter, that have been following uh, uh, the channel, and have seen some of the stuff, and have sent words of encouragement, uh, I sincerely thank you. Um, it really has helped me get through an incredibly difficult time. Um, one that doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. Um, so, as, as always, thank you so much. Um, I always appreciate stuff like that, and it, it really does truly help me out. What I want to talk about today, though, um, is I want to talk about designing an adventure. Um, and the reason I want to talk about this is because, not last week, but the week before, uh, Critical Role was on hiatus, so... Liam O'Brien stepped up, he wrote uh, an adventure, and he ran it uh, during the normal Critical Role time slot, and it was phenomenal. Um, Liam, if you're watching this, um, brilliant job, absolutely phenomenal job, uh, and now I'm going to use your adventure uh, to kind of teach people uh, some of the ins and outs of writing, uh, actually writing uh, a DD and d adventure, so <laughs> congratulations. Anyway, um, Liam did a lot of things that uh, were very, very good. And I don't know if it's just his background as an actor where he understands good story structure uh, or his background as a, um, <coughs> as a voice director where he's very good at kind of seeing the big picture and getting a lot of small pieces to fit together to create a whole. But what he did was a perfect example of how to write uh, an adventure. Specifically, uh, uh, what he did was was really a, a great way um, to do a, a one-shot type adventure because it gives you a little bit of everything all in one little piece. You can use these tips for much larger, like campaign style things, um, but there are uh, there are other things that you can do in a campaign that really make it solid. So this is specifically going to be garnered towards short-term adventuring, like one shots or you know maybe something that you play uh, a couple of times and then it's over um, so first things first when Liam started out and this is something I think a lot of people missed simply because uh, we don't have the knowledge that his players did but the first thing that he did was he did a little bit of fan service to the players um, he uh, put them in an environment that they really knew uh, he took very specific details and so what this was doing was creating an environment where the players themselves felt rewarded for playing already they felt that they already had a leg up because they knew the situation and every time he brought in a new character um if you guys watched the q a afterwards uh he mentioned things like no this person is real and this person is real in the location we were real and you heard throughout uh most of that first section everybody kept saying oh my god this is so cool um, I know this place. I've been in this place. It's so cool to play a character in a place that I've already been. Um, that is a perfect way to start off a one-shot. You want to give your players something to feel special about. Um, it could be like Liam did in this particular instance where he just gave them something very, very familiar. And so they felt rewarded uh, for playing by being put into a very familiar place with a lot of nostalgia around it. Uh, and they would know things and be able to do things that, let's say, had I been playing, I wouldn't have been able to do. Something like when Taliesin took that TV monitor and, and uh, tried to rush it through the glass. I wouldn't even know the TV monitor was there um, because I don't have knowledge of that. So he rewarded his players right off the bat. And that, again, that's a, a wonderful way to do it. You, you can do it by giving them something familiar. Um, you can do it uh, in a lot of other ways as well. Um, some, um, like the D&D &D Adventure League uh, this year, um, I think it's Curse of Strahd, actually has a few things where you can reward players uh, for starting new characters. Um, 
there are there's so many different ways to kind of reward players and it's always a good idea to do it relatively early it doesn't need to be something grandiose like all the stuff that liam did really had no effect on how powerful they were it really had no effect on on how the story went it was just something he did for the players um so even something as simple as if you're running something in forgotten realms and uh you've got a, a player who's a huge ra salvatore fan just writing in something uh you know about uh a dark elf ranger recently went through this area will be just that little bit of reward of oh my god he knows what i like and now i'm interacting in the same world as one of you know my heroes one of one of the people that i enjoy running with so just starting off the adventure with something to give the players to make them feel comfortable um is a perfect way to start off and the other thing that that does is it, it creates a bond within the group um, and that's a very difficult thing to do in general especially if people don't really know each other so again starting off with some sort of reward something to incentivize the the players not the characters the players give them a reason for going hey i really enjoy you being here thank you for that here you go give them a really cool introduction what i did in my uh in my game uh, is I wrote about a page introduction for each character where they gave me a backstory, which is normally around a page to two page. I require a lot for my custom campaign. Um, and then um, to get them into the story, I wrote them quite literally about a page of text where I described how they got into the story. And every, uh, every story had them doing something really cool, giving their character something super cool that they did, making them feel really special. Um, I would use as much as I could from their backstory to really put it in. And that little reward made them that much more willing to play. So things like that. Give them a, a reward just for sitting down at the table. Um, uh, the uh, uh, other thing that uh, he did uh, that, again, is, is, is really, really important, especially for one-shots and things like that. There was a mythos to the entire game. It wasn't just he randomly grabbed people and put them into an area and then that area ceased to exist after they they were there. By using those those uh, people that uh, the Critical Role cast actually knew um, and, and turning them into NPCs, there uh, uh, existed a history before the event got started. And by making mentions, uh, spoiler alert, uh, towards the end of uh, the game, uh, uh, he mentions uh, something about uh, just a, a few lines of dialogue where he says, you guys realize that um, you have been together before and you've been on many adventures and you will continue having many adventures across the multiverse. Something like that created this mythos where when his adventure ended, the world didn't cease to exist. This is, this is a real world. This is a real experience. Those characters still exist. Um, and it's not as difficult as it may sound. Um, one of the things that I did was a little bit overboard, but I'd been writing this campaign for close to two years at this point, um, is I gave them a history of, of uh, where the world came from, and I know what's going to happen next as far as the world is concerned. I know things happening in other countries in my campaign. I know things happening you know, on other planes of existence and things like that that will all interact um, but I constantly try to, uh, remind my players that, um, their actions, uh, are not in a vacuum. What they do affects the world as a whole. And that's a really easy way to give people that feeling of, okay, this isn't just something that exists in a bubble and then poof, disappears. Um, this is something that's real. You know, uh, Liam making those mentions of, you know, other, you know, realities and things like that made it seem like what these people were doing had an effect on more than just the you know three or four hours they were playing the game no this is something that's going to continue this is something that you know there's a reason for them to win there are you know bad things that can happen when they lose other than you know oops we lost the game now we can't play anymore uh and so that's a really important even in one shots give them just that little bit of there are other things happening in the world as well you know, let the world exist beyond the bubble that they see. Um, and like I said, there's there's tons of different ways to do it. Liam did it absolutely brilliantly. Um, other things can be bringing in NPCs that, uh, you know, at the end that mention, 
oh, wow, you know, this happened. I wonder what's going to happen with our ally in the north. They were re relying on, on this for this and this and this. It's literally just three or four lines of dialogue that you add in somewhere in there that gives them uh, the impression that what they did mattered and didn't just matter to them. It mattered to the world as a whole, because in real life, that happens. A single business uh, goes belly up and it changes the uh, the economy, not only in that small little town, uh, but for miles around. Um, uh, uh, you know, certain people uh, dying, babies being born, all of these things affect the world around, not just the people that are physically next to it at the time. So put that even into your short one shots, make a little mention. And that also means that you can revisit the characters that were in that one shot and the, the, uh, the world you created for that small little adventure. You can go back and revisit them later. Maybe you want to run another one shot instead of designing a brand new world. You can go, we're going to use this world and we're just going to do this. And I can make reference to the old one. Um, one of the other things that Liam did brilliantly, and I think a lot of people, uh, because it's still a relatively new uh, thing, uh, but playing for an audience, which they do, um, Liam took into account the audience. Now, the first part where they're talking about Warner Bros., uh, Warner Brothers Studios and stuff like that, um, that was for the players. Most of us had no idea what it meant. It, it really had no meaning. He could have said it anywhere in the world, and it wouldn't have made any difference to us because we have no connection to that. However, when Marisha and Matt came in, super badass. That was, first of all, that was a reward for uh, Matt and Marisha um, to kind of show them that, hey, you know, even though you couldn't play with us, we're going to do something cool. But... That was a major fan service for the audience. Marisha and Matt, everybody in the uh, uh, the cast is very, very uh, important to the critters and everything. Um, and so Matt and Marisha not being there, by him bringing them in, by him letting them do something just magical and amazing, uh, the audience felt rewarded. Everything they did, like it was, it was fun to watch the different characters interact and, and watching uh, Travis get upset about his intelligence modifier and all these other things like all of that was really really cool and fun however the uh, uh, when Marisha and Matt came in the chat went crazy uh, everyone was there and it was a huge huge reward to the audience and that's another thing um, that due to the fact that a lot of critters are now streaming their games that's something that you really need to consider is you have an audience, um, you can't neglect them as well. Um, and even if you're just doing a one shot for your friends, they are going to tell other people about it. You will always have an audience for D&D. That's just how it works. Um, whether they're watching live or whether they're hurting, uh, hearing it second or third hand just because people are bragging about how much fun the game is, you always have an audience. And you should do things that let the audience feel just as special as the players themselves. The players themselves, you know, you, you really need to treat them nice and you really need to make them feel special without babying or coddling them or anything like that. They, they should feel that they have to actually contribute to do something. But again, they're, a DM can't run a game for nobody. Um, however, you need to uh, treat your audience uh, to something special as well. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do that. If you have an audience large enough that they uh, become invested uh, in certain characters or certain storylines, bringing uh, those back, like Victor the Black Powder Merchant. Yes, the players really love that, but he, gets com uh, he keeps coming back because the audience loves it. Um, Matt and Marisha coming in and doing those super badass awesome stuff that was because the audience was missing them. Yes, it was always be also because Matt and Marisha are, are super cool and Liam wanted to in include them in the game. Um, uh, but that's 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 why it happens. So um, you really do need to do things. So that can be something as simple, like I said, bringing in an NPC that they uh, uh, that they really enjoy. Uh, sometimes it's it's something as simple as just making you know jokes or references to real world events. Um, I do this a lot in my parody games, uh, and it's actually relatively simple to do in uh, one-shots. Um, 
where you just make a, a, a mild reference or something like that. It doesn't have to be game breaking, but it's just enough that it gets the audience to go, oh, ha, 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 I know what he's saying there. Um, I had an armor that uh, was cursed to make people fight over whether they thought it was black and blue or white and gold. Um, you know, that was uh, something that I had a, a lot of fun with in one of my one shots. Uh, just little things like that. Consider your audience. Put things in there if you can without breaking the story. Again, it's it's not designed to be something that you, you go out of your way to do. But you're the world creator. You can put just little references in there um, and give your audience a uh, uh, something. And then uh, uh, the final thing that Liam did uh, was he went and created a... Uh, um, uh, he he left it uh, open. Uh, the adventures can come back to this. Like he can, he can come back to this. And I've mentioned this before. Uh, it's important that even if you're running a one shot, leave it open. Don't don't end everything. So tight thing like oh we destroyed the universe and on all evil in the universe the world is saved. That's a relatively boring ending. Let them com complete what they were supposed to do. Win uh, and then leave it open. For interpretation leave it open for revisiting and things like that um you don't have to you know leave it on a to be continued or a cliffhanger or anything like that um but uh, uh make sure you understand that you may be coming back to this setting um and uh you know leave little breadcrumbs for it you know they've just finished you know wiping out the castle uh and uh uh you know wiping out all the bad guys in the castle and they they come back to town uh, and they get rewarded and go, wow, thank you so much. You know, he's been, you know, uh, hurting us for so long and making it so difficult. Now we can get back to doing what we were doing before we started dealing with this, which is trying to make peace with our neighbor or which is trying to export all our goods to this or this. It seems like such a minor thing, but um, just by mentioning that other thing, oh, good, you fixed that problem. Now we can get back to business as normal. Um, again, creates this world that continues on afterwards and gives you the ability to revisit later. Even if it's a one-shot, you may one-shot it again. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to talk about this. Again, Liam, if you took the time to watch this, thank you so much. You were amazing. You were lovely. Um, and uh, critters and everything like that. Um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, uh, follow Liam's suit and you know do fun, amazing things for your friends. Anyway, that's all for me today, and I will see you guys later. All right? Bye-bye.